the cherry tree by Ruskin Bond. One day, when Rakesh was six, he walked home from the Masuri Bazaar eating cherries. They were a little sweet, a little sour, small, bright red cherries which had come all the way from the Kashmir Valley. Here in the Himalayan foothills where Rakesh lived, there were not many fruit trees. The soil was stony and the dry cold winds stunted the growth of most plants. But on the more sheltered slopes, there were forests of oak and deodar. Rakesh lived with his grandfather on the outskirts of Masuri, just where the forest began. Grandfather was a retired forest ranger. He had a little cottage outside the town. Rakesh was on his way home from school when he bought the cherries. He paid 50 paise for the bunch. It took him half an hour to walk home and by the time he reached the cottage, there were only three cherries left. Have a cherry, Grandfather, he said as soon as he saw his grandfather in the garden. Grandfather took one cherry and Rakesh promptly ate the other two. He kept the last seed in his mouth for some time, rolling it round and round in his tongue until all the tang had gone. Then he placed the seed on the palm of his hand and studied it. Are cherry seeds lucky? asked Rakesh. Of course. Then I'll keep it. Nothing is lucky if you put it away. If you want luck, you must put it to some use. What can I do with a seed? Plant it. So, Rakesh found a small spade and began to dig up a flower bed. Hey, not there, said Grandfather. I've sown mustard in that bed. Plant it in that shady corner where it won't be disturbed. Rakesh went to a corner of the garden where the earth was soft and yielding. He did not have to dig. He pressed the seed into the soil with his thumb and it went right in. Then he had his lunch and ran off to play cricket with his friends and forgot all about the cherry seed. When it was winter in the hills, a cold wind blew down from the snows and went woo 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 in the Deodar trees and the garden was dry and bare. In the evening, Grandfather and Rakesh sat over a charcoal fire and Grandfather told Rakesh stories. Stories about people who turned into animals and ghosts who lived in trees and beans that jumped and stones that wept. And in turn, Rakesh would read to him from the newspaper, Grandfather's eyesight being rather weak. Rakesh found the newspaper very dull, especially after the stories. But Grandfather wanted all the news. They knew it was spring when the wild duck flew north again to Siberia. Early in the morning, when he got up to chop wood and light a fire, Rakesh saw the V-shaped formation streaming northwards and heard the call of the birds clearly through the thin mountain air. One morning in the garden, he bent to pick up what he thought was a small twig and found to his surprise that it was well rooted. He stared at it for a moment, then ran to fetch Grandfather, calling, Grandfather, come and look! The cherry tree has come up! What cherry tree? asked Grandfather, who had forgotten about it. The seed we planted last year! Look! It's come up! Rakesh went down on his haunches, while Grandfather bent almost double and peered down at the tiny tree. It was almost four inches high. Yes, it's a cherry tree, said Grandfather. You should water it now and then. Rakesh ran indoors and came back with a bucket of water. Don't drown it, said Grandfather. Rakesh gave it a sprinkling and circled it with pebbles. What are the pebbles for? asked Grandfather. For privacy, said Rakesh. He looked at the tree every morning, but it did not seem to be growing very fast. So he stopped looking at it, except quickly, out of the corner of his eye. And after a week or two, when he allowed himself to look at it properly, he found that it had grown at least an inch. That year, the monsoon rains came early and Rakesh plodded to and from school in raincoat and gumboots. Ferns sprang up from the trunks of trees. Strange-looking lilies came up in the long grass and even when it wasn't raining, the trees dripped and mist came curling up the valley. The cherry tree grew quickly in this season. It was about two feet high when a goat entered the garden and ate all the leaves. 
Only the main stem and two thin branches remained. Never mind, said Grandfather, seeing that Rakesh was upset. It will grow again. Cherry trees are tough. Towards the end of the rainy season, new leaves appeared on the tree. Then a woman cutting grass cut the cherry tree in two. When Grandfather saw what had happened, he went after the woman and scolded her. But the damage could not be repaired. Maybe it will die now, said Rakesh. Maybe, said Grandfather. But the cherry tree had no intention of dying. By the time summer came round again, it had sent several new shoots with tender green leaves. Rakesh had grown taller too. He was eight now, a sturdy boy with curly black hair and deep black eyes. Blackberry, Grandfather called them. That monsoon, Rakesh went home to his village to help his father and mother with the planting and ploughing and sowing. He was thinner but stronger when he came back to grandfather's house at the end of the rains to find that the cherry tree had grown another foot. It was now up to his chest. Even when there was rain, Rakesh would sometimes water the tree. He wanted it to know that he was there. One day, he found a bright green praying mantis perched on a branch. Peering at him with bulging eyes, Rakesh let it remain there. It was the cherry tree's first visitor. The next visitor was a hairy caterpillar, who started making a meal of the leaves. Rakesh removed it quickly and dropped it on a heap of dry leaves. Come back when you are a butterfly, he said. Winter came early. The cherry tree bent low with the weight of snow. Field mice sought shelter in the roof of the cottage. The road from the valley was blocked, and for several days there was no newspaper, and this made grandfather quite grumpy. His stories began to have unhappy endings. In February, it was Rakesh's birthday. He was nine, and the tree was four, but almost as tall as Rakesh. One morning, when the sun came out, grandfather came into the garden. Let some warmth get into my bones, he said. He stopped in front of the cherry tree, stared at it for a few moments, and then called out, "Rakesh, come and look! Come quickly before it falls!" Rakesh and grandfather gazed at the tree as though it had performed a miracle. There was a pale pink blossom at the end of a branch. The following year, there were more blossoms, and suddenly the tree was taller than Rakesh, even though it was less than half his age. And then. It was taller than Grandfather, who was taller than some of the oak trees. But Rakesh had grown too. He could run and jump and climb trees as well as most boys, and he read a lot of books. Although he still liked listening to Grandfather's tales, in the cherry tree, tiny birds pecked at the blossoms and broke them off. But the tree kept blossoming right through the spring, and there were always more blossoms than birds. That summer, there were small cherries on the tree. Rakesh tasted one and spat it out. It's too sour, he said. They'll be better next year, said Grandfather. But the birds liked them, especially the bigger birds, such as the bulbuls and scarlet minivets, and they flitted in and out of the foliage, feasting on the cherries. On a warm, sunny afternoon, when even the bees looked sleepy. Rakesh was looking for grandfather, but did not find him in any of his favorite places around the house. Then he looked out of the bedroom window and saw grandfather reclining on a cane chair under the cherry tree. There is just the right amount of shade here," said grandfather. "And I like looking at the leaves. They are pretty leaves," said Rakesh. "And they are always ready to dance if there's a breeze." After grandfather had come indoors, Rakesh went into the garden and lay down on the grass beneath the tree. He gazed up through the leaves at the great blue sky, and turning on his side, he could see the mountains striding away into the clouds. He was still lying under the tree when the evening shadows crept across the garden. Grandfather came back and sat down beside Rakesh, and they waited in silence until it was dark. There are so many trees in the forest," said Rakesh. "What's so special about this tree? Why do we like it so much?" 
We planted it ourselves, said Grandfather. That's why it's special. Just one small seed, said Rakesh, and he touched the smooth bark of the tree that had grown. He ran.